Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.5, part 2 of 3. We are reducing and multiplying fractions. Now, in the last section, if we recall, if we watch that video, we, have, uh, we had a fraction of 2 fourths and 1 half. And we determined that those are equivalent. 2 fourths and 1 half are the same thing. Well, why are 2 fourths and 1 half the same thing? Well, we can uh, simplify this fraction. And we determined that we could divide out a 2 and divide out a 4. We're going to look at another way to do that um, as we move on. But 2 fourths was 1 half, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. This is in simplest form. We also call this reducing. So we wrote it in simplest form. We reduced it. So those are synonyms that we'll use. So what's the other method that I kind of referred to? Well, in a previous section, we talked about prime factorization. Let's write this as the product of its primes. Well, 2 is a prime number. It is what it is. But 4, if we factor it down, maybe we use a factor tree. It's 2 times 2. I can rewrite the number 4 as 2 times 2. One of the fundamental principles that we've explored is that any number divided by itself is 1. So I can reduce this to 1. So now I have a 1 on top and a 1 on the bottom. Well, any number divided by itself is 1. I can't just say they reduce and eliminate them. I can't just make it go away, because I have to have something on top. So what is on top? It's a 1. So 1 on top. And 1 times 2 on the bottom would give me 2. Now, as you get familiar with reducing fractions and writing them in their prime factorization, and you cancel these, you can think of them as canceling. But it is a 1. So don't ever leave a numerator or a denominator blank. We just write a 1 there instead, and then do the division any further if we could. Uh, if it's uh, improper fraction, maybe we want to write it a little differently. So here's 2 sixths. Try this one. It's very similar to this. Try this one yourself. And uh, hopefully you get the simplified reduced fraction that you're looking for. All right, let's look at a few more examples, a little bit more uh, in depth than 2 sixths. Here we have 5 twentieths. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as its prime factors. Well, 5 is a prime number, so it is what it is. 20, well, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. And I could write 4 as 2 times 2, and I'll do that right here. 2 times 2 times that 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. And now we can see this 5 divided by 5 is 1. Well, 1 is still over 2 times 2 times 1, which this doesn't change it. So we have 1 over 4. 5 twentieths is 1 fourth. What about this one here? Well, this one's improper. But we can still use this tool to simplify it. And we're still going to leave it as an improper fraction. 18 is the same as 9 times 2. And 9 is 3 times 3. So it's 3 times 3 times 2. This is equal to 18. 4 is 2 times 2. And now that everything's in its prime factored form, I can reduce it. 2 divided by 2 reduces to 1. While 3 doesn't cancel 2, so that's as much as I can cancel. And if I think of this as 1, 1 times that isn't going to change it. 1 times that isn't going to change it. So I have 3 times 3 over 2. Now, because it was improper and there's still factors left, just like I did here, 2 times 2 is 4, I put those back together. 3 times 3 is 9 over the only factor that remains is 2. 9 halves is the same thing as 18 fourths. It's in simplest form. It's been reduced, but it's an improper fraction. And improper fractions are OK. What about this one here? Sometimes we don't have to take it all the way down to its prime factors. Maybe we'd recognize something cancels right away. If we look at this, we took this all the way down to its prime factors and then canceled. But what if we see something that cancels before we get all the way down to the primes? 
Well, one example is this one right here. I see we have 70 y's divided by 80 y's. I know that 70 is 7 times 10, and 80 is 8 times 10. Well, that concept that any number divided by itself reduces to 1, that doesn't change here. Even if this is not a prime, 10 divided by 10 is 1. So I can think of it as this being 1 over 1. So I have 7 y's over 8 y's. Well, what we do to prime numbers when we cancel them, or any number when we cancel them, we can do the same thing to the variables. We can treat these just like they were a prime number or any number. Any number divided by itself is 1. We can say this reduces to 1 if that reduces to 1, 1 over 1. So our factor of 10 canceled, our factor of y canceled. The only thing that's left is a 7 over an 8. And a fraction like 7 eighths is much easier to deal with than 70 y's over 80 y's. So we reduce it to something more manageable. Write it in simplest form, 7 eighths. All right, let's look at this one here. 45b oh, divided by 80b squared. Well, if I'm going to factor this down, this is 5 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. So I'll say 5 times 3 times 3, I'll write it using an exponent squared, times b. So it's written out in its prime factorization. 80b, well, I know that 8 times 10 is 80. So I could factor it down that way. But neither 8 or 10 are prime factors. So I could take this further down to be 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. But hopefully we remember 8 is a perfect cube, so it's 2 cubed. Well, this is 2 times 5. Our 10 is 2 times 5. So I have 4 2's and 1 5. So I have 1 5 and 2 to the fourth, 4 2's, 4 factors of 2. And I have b squared. Well, you can write variables in the same factored form. b squared just means I have two b's. I'm going to write it as b times b. And now that everything's been factored down to its prime factors, I can start canceling. 5 reduces 5. So now we have 1 times this quantity. It doesn't change it. b divided by b, that reduces to 1. And we have 3's, 2's, and b's left. Nothing else is going to cancel. So we just redo the multiplication. 3 squared is 9. 2 to the fourth is 16 times the remaining factor of b, 9 over 16b, 9 sixteenths b, I guess you'd call it. All right, let's do this one here. I look at this, and I say this is 6 times 10. And I know it gets a little crowded here, but if we work it out on paper, we have more space. And this number is 6 times 6. So I'm not going to factor it all the way to its primes where I can say, hey, a 6 on top will cancel a 6 on the bottom. If I can do that and skip a step or make the work go a little faster, that's going to work for me too. But I still have 10 and 6. Let's write those down. This would be 2 times 5. 6 is 2 times 3. I have two x's, x times x, and a y. And here I have 1x and 3 y's, y times y times y. And now I can reduce even further. Just because I recognized the 6's would cancel, it saved me a little bit of time. But I still wrote these out. This 2 cancels that 2. This x cancels that x. One of these y's cancel one of these y's. Remember, it's a 1 to 1 canceling. You can't cancel all of them just one at a time. If you have one on top, cancel the one on the bottom. So it may look a little messy, but let's see what's left on top, a 5 and an x. Everything else reduced to 1, 1, 1, 1. On the bottom, we have a 3 and 2 y's. 3 times 2 y's, well, that would be y squared. So this big, nasty fraction of 60x squared y over 36xy cubed is nothing more than 5x over 3y squared, something a lot more manageable. Why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own? And we will stop the video right here and continue on for part three. Thank you for watching.